Hey guys, Public here, back with another video talking about Shadow Priest in Raid and Mythic Plus for patch 10.1.5. We've had quite a few hotfixes lately targeting the spec in Mythic Plus that just have adjusted quite a lot of our choices, so I'm going to go over that in this video. And specifically, we're going to go over the following things. Um, you can feel free to skip around um, in the description. There are timestamps if you'd like. We're going to cover talent builds, uh, general gearing suggestions. I'm going to go over rotations, specifically more openers with two builds and then we'll cover secondary stats and consumables and hopefully i'll give you a better idea of what to do with this patch especially after all the recent hotfixes i will note this is the video version of my ac veins guide so if you prefer a more written version especially one that is probably going to be more up to date definitely suggest taking a read at the ic veins guide which is linked down in the description as well it's just easier to keep that updated and has a lot more nitty-gritty information so if you're looking for absolutely everything about the spec please check that out Otherwise, let's dive in. All right, first things first, let's talk about talents. This is definitely where most of the changes are going to be in the video if you've watched any of the re more recent stuff. So, like I said, we had several hotfixes that adjusted just damage and values of various spells in our kit, which has changed some of the builds that we run. You know, like when you nerf dot damage or shadowy apparitions, talents that use those spells aren't quite as good. So, in general, if you're just coming back to Shadow Priest or you have been playing, you'll find that Dark Ascension is now doing better than it was before. And in a lot of cases in Raid, it's performing better than Void Form and Void Eruption. Mythic Plus, I'd say it's still pretty competitive. And then even if you're talking about like high key scenarios, a lot of the builds are, are somewhat uh, similar than what they were before. Void Form still does really well in high high keys and in chain pulling and doing, like if you're pulling trash onto bosses, they're kind of in a Void Form angle. But Dark Ascension has become way more viable for people doing you know, their weekly 17 keys or they're just trying to time 20s and stuff like that. Dark Ascension is definitely more competitive in that kind of environment. So let's dive into the builds. So in Season 2, right now, there are roughly four talent builds that I think you need to have as a Shadow Priest. There are a couple other ones in here, but there's really just a core four builds that I think everyone should take. So let's cover those right now. So the first one is your single target build with Dark Ascension. This is, like I was mentioning before, is going to be kind of like a de facto one inside of raids now. While you can still play Void Form on single target, this guy's, you know, 3,000-ish DPS ahead of Void Form, and that's including movement scenarios. So even if, if you're able to just sit there and turret, it's actually even a bit more than that. So yeah, this is kind of our new de facto standard for, for raids and single target. Specifically, the nerf to, um, they've nerfed Yogg-Sarong, they've nerfed Apparitions. All of that has really hurt Void Form. So you're seeing Dark Ascension do very well in single target stuff now. Now, the Void Form build is still viable. It is still linked in the Icy Veins guide if you'd like. But in my opinion, this is the kind of the default that I would suggest. With Dark Ascension, it is going to play slightly differently than Void Form. The main difference is you're going to have access to Death Speaker, which you typically did not take with void form and then the other kind of newer thing not necessarily with this build is we now take distorted reality in single target so after some recent changes they actually did balance our kit a little bit with devouring play which by then did already kind of move value into distorted reality um, because it just flat out buffs devouring plague when the base damage of devouring plague gets buffed you actually do see distorted reality creep back into the meta where mind's eye was benefiting was when you were taking talents like screams of the void or more apparition focused builds because you just ended up casting more devouring plagues but distorted reality is now very competitive it's actually in a sim that isn't even moving, Distorted Reality is winning. Now, where, where I, why I mentioned movement is a lot of players might be struggling with Devouring Plague uptime, where if you're taking Mind's Eye and your uptime is like 90% or lower, you're probably in that threshold where Distorted Reality would have been much better for you because it's way easier to maintain Devouring Plague with this talent. And like I said, you're also doing a bit more damage. So that's, that's kind of the build in a nutshell. Uh, you take your Charge and Cthune instead of uh, yogg Saron and Cthune with Void Form. Otherwise, no, no real changes to speak to in the in the single target build. So that's single target with Dark Ascension, and we'll I'll show openers and rotation in a bit. The next build on the list is your single target, but I need Shadow Crash build. So again, similar to Void Form, you can still run a version of this with Void Form, but I would strongly suggest the Dark Ascension version. The reason why I suggest that is this build loses much less damage picking up shadow crash than the void form one does so specifically you're not losing as much single target with the dark ascension build when you need shadow crash for like mythic or not even mythic but like neltharian or sarkareth when you have 
It's a mostly single target fight, but there are adds that come out, so you need Shadow Crash for that. Would highly suggest running the Dark Ascension version with uh, Shadow Crash, just to maximize our single target damage. Those two points that you have to move around for the Void Form build are a bit more consequential for your single target damage, so you're seeing a much larger gap between the two Shadow Crash builds on single target. So like I said before, it's about 3,000 DPS, you know, 3%, whatever you want to say, 2 or 3% on single target between Dark Ascension and Void Form. With the Shadow Crash build, it's closer to like 8%, 9%, and that's just with where you're moving those points around. So would definitely suggest this build. Again, you could still run Void Form if you really want to, especially if you've already like put like 200 pulls into a boss with that build, I probably wouldn't suggest changing. But I do think this is going to be the new standard build that people will roll up to bosses with. And I think as people go back and kind of reparsing fights, you'll see more of this kind of pop up. Again, it's basically just a single target build. We just move our points out of Maddening Touch into Shadow Crash. And we did also move Phantasmal Pathogen points into Mind Devourer. I will note there is some flexibility with some of these points and, and some of these talent builds. I'll mention some of those. Like one of them, anytime you're taking Dark Ascension... In single target E raid scenarios, you can kind of swap points back and forth between these two. It just kind of depends on what you're doing and where you want. In this case, for this build, I almost always want to pick Death Speaker. So that's why we put the two points into Mind Devour. So we can still get Death Speaker, even though we dropped Maddening Touch. So yeah, like I said, this is going to be good for um, Neltharian, Sarkareth. Basically any fight where you care a lot about single target, but there are also adds that pop up. I think it also does well on experiments and honestly amalgamation as well can be useful there. Other fights, you know, Assault of the Zakala, you could use it as well if you're looking for more boss damage. Uh, depends on if you want to parse or not on that fight. Um, also good for there. Generally speaking, those are going to be the big ones. I think you could run it on Skarn depending on how grouped the adds are getting for you. But yeah, otherwise, the big ones for this guy, Amalgamation Chamber, Forgotten Experiments, Echo Neltharian, and Scale Commander Sarkarath. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. It's, and, and for the most part, that covers raiding builds. These two will pretty much get you through every fight. The one exception being if you wanted like a super cleave heavy setup um, for Assault of the Zakali, if you're just trying to pad, then you can use one of the dungeon builds. Um, otherwise, let's let's get get into the dungeon builds. Okay, so the first one that a lot of people are going to be familiar with is the Void Form Triple Idol setup. So triple idol is, uh, you know, there's no secret code to that. It's you're taking three capstone idols in this level 10 space. Triple idol builds will continue to be where you want to go if you want more trash damage. That's just kind of the setup. And basically all that is, if it wasn't clear, is you basically take the single target builds with Shadow Crash and then you add Idol of Nazoth. And that's basically what these builds turn into. So if you're curious what the Void Eruption Shadow Crash build looked like, it's uh, it's that. <laughs> you just move those two points around and you're done. Not that I suggest really running it, but there it is. So Void Eruption is still going to be a decent uh, build for Mythic Plus. Like I mentioned before, you are taking quite a single target hit with this build now, specifically compared to the Dark Ascension version. So when you want to run this is going to be really specific to the kind of key that you're running. So if you're just running a weekly 17, a weekly 20, and you're pulling like one pack at a time, this build's going to feel horrible. Really to get the maximum potential of this build, you want to be chain pulling where possible or pulling multiple packs at once and you want to be in a very coordinated group with your cooldowns meaning hey guys i have all my cooldowns up let's pull big or you know when to save your cooldowns because the route is determined it's not like a a pug route that's just kind of randomly pulling something so yeah if you're in that kind of more predefined scenario you're going to see streamers and like high key pushers almost always using void form for that reason that's what this build is for where it's going to struggle like i mentioned is when you're doing pure single target damage that's going to be the biggest downside with this build and again like i mentioned before it's about eight or even nine percent loss in single target compared to ones that run dark ascension so that's kind of why the dark ascension builds have kind of popped up because for your your weekly keys you know single target is pretty important <laughs> so yeah like i said this is going to be good for um uh you know big aoe potential um, if you're pulling stuff on cooldown, like with your stuff, and again, top end key pushing, that kind of stuff. This is going to be your standard build here. Two notes that I want to call out here. There are a few. There are some flex points here that you can move stuff around. So if you want to move points out of Phantasmal Pathogen or Mind Devourer into Void Touch, to Mental Decay, even Dark Evangelism or Maddening Touch are still kind of okay. You can absolutely still do that. I would strongly suggest still running Mind Spike. I know some people don't. It is just more damage. Uh, they did somewhat nerf. Mind Flay builds because they they because of the recent nerf to our dots, Dark Evangelism, Maddening Touch were nerfed. So like these points being less valuable makes it less 
sense to drop Mind Spike. So we definitely suggest running these two talents for sure. Then the other question is Distorted Reality or Mind's Eye. This is going to be similar for the Dark Ascension build. These two talents have a bit more defining choice with them in the builds. Distorted Reality will almost always niche you more overall damage. And like I said, it's usually better in single target as well. So as a default pick, I would suggest Distorted Reality. But if you're in a scenario where you really care about one target priority damage while AoEing, Mind's Eye will win there. So Mind's Eye is about 2 or 3% better than Distorted Reality on funnel scenarios. So what I mean by that is, so you're, you've pulled five mobs. One of those mobs is super important, has more health than everything, and needs to die first. So what you do is you just, just cast your Devouring Plagues on just that one target. You can do that with Distorted Reality. You can do that with just Mind's Eye. With Mind's Eye, like I said, that's going to be about 2 to 3% better with those two. Now, Distorted Reality gets better than Mind's Eye when you're able to spread Devouring Plagues out. So every time you get 55 Insanity, you just tab Devouring Plague to another higher priority target. And doing that, not even with a whole lot of like, you don't need to think too hard about it, just doing it very quite simply like that will get you more damage in Mind's Eye in kind of an overall scenario or on that specific pack. If you really need that, I really want to tunnel down, funnel this one big priority target for like a specific dungeon or something, Mind's Eye would be the, the, the slightly better choice there. Or if you want better overall, Destroyed Reality would be the choice there. Now, the other thing I want to call out, because a lot of people will say like, well, that funnel damage or that single target priority in AoE is very valuable. While I agree, keep in mind, Destroyed Reality, one, is only losing like 2 or 3%. So if there is a pack where you want that funnel, you can still do it. And you're like basically similar DPS. And then you get your, the option is opened up for any other pull where you do just want to spread for overall damage. And then the main thing to keep in mind, while you're spreading, you're really only ever going to get two or three de uh, Devouring Plagues out at once. So what that means is you're kind of upgrading your priority target in AoE from one target to two to three. So if you just think about some pulls in Mythic Plus, I think a lot of times there are like two mobs or maybe even three mobs that have the same health or the same priority level that you want to maybe focus down evenly. That's where Destroyed Reality would actually be considerably better than Mind's Eye because you actually do get that ability to spread and especially have that increase to Phantasmal Pathogen and our Mastery when you're outside of cooldowns by having extra Devouring Plagues out. So experiment with both. I think they're both strong, but that's the, the two cents on those two, that, that decision. Okay, and then the other build to think about is the Triple Idol Dark Ascension version. So like I said, this is, you want to pick this in scenarios where the dungeon is going to have a lot of single targets. So this is more of a tyrannical focus build for sure. It still uses N Nizoth um, for that bigger AoE damage because uh, we don't have a whole lot of options if that's what you're looking for. But otherwise, it was very similar to what you already play in single target in Raid. So strengths with this build, like I said, great single target, um, gives you those three idols. So you're still kind of versatile on what you're trying to do. And with Dark Ascension, you do have a kind of off burst damage when you're when you don't have power infusion up because you can use Dark Ascension and Mindbender every minute, um, which just gives you a better damage pattern if you're kind of doing these one pull at a time type dungeons. I think a good example here is like Neltharian's Lair has some points where it's somewhat difficult to chain pull uh, just because the mobs are just so spread out from each other. So in dungeons like that, when again, you're just pulling like one thing at a time, that's where this thing is really shining, especially you know if that dungeon also has a lot of single target or if you're trying to index more into single target. Again, if you're still chain pulling and doing that kind of stuff, you're going to see less AoE potential with this build compared to Void Form. Where this one would start making sense is if there's enough single target in the dungeon or enough places where you're not chain pulling, where that is being offset because of how much better this build is on single target. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, with this build, same thing, you can still run Mind's Eye or Destroyed Reality, up to you. Mind Flay does not make sense with Dark Ascension. Never take Mind Flay with Dark Ascension. The, one of the few reasons this build is working is because of Mind Spike, Mind Melt, Mastermind all pair together inside of your cooldowns. Uh, Mind Spike becomes pretty powerful especially as it buffs up those mind blasts. So you, you can't, <laughs> do, do not do not drop um, any of that, but you do still have flex points here with this build. So if you want to take Void Touched, um, you can drop Mental Decay, you can drop Mind Devour, Phantasmal Pathogen um, with any of those, the, the, the standard flex points if you want to move stuff around. I would say with this build, uh, keep in mind, 
distorted reality does get better with Mind Devourer, and they do kind of play off of each other quite nicely. So usually if you're taking distorted reality, I would lean towards taking Mind Devourer. Um, if you are taking Mind's Eye, you can consider moving those points around if you want. That's up to you. Now I do have like a full list of like where to think about which dungeon in Icy Veins. Like it's saying like, oh, it's Neltharian's Lair Tyrannical. Here are a list of builds I would consider. Um, so if you want to check that out, it's in Icy Veins. And I'll update that as new info comes out. Now, there is a third build I want to talk about in Dungeons, and, and that is simply the single target Shadow Crash build. You can see it looks very similar to that Triple Isle setup. We just moved the point out of Nazoth into Deathspeaker. Deathspeaker is a pretty strong point. It's not a, a super large difference between these two builds, but, it, you know, Deathspeaker is just way more single target than Nazoth is. So if you're in a dungeon, especially a tyrannical situation, you can consider running this single target plus Shadow Crash setup, or sometimes referred to as the Yusharj Cthune build, because you're only taking two idols now. It still does really great single target. You're getting like a, a few, like a percent or two higher than if you were running this off. And again, it's just really competitive in those dungeons where it's like Nothering's Lair is, I think, the biggest one. Even Halls of Infusion, I think, is the other large one. It really just depends on how you're pulling the dungeon, how many pulls you're doing. So I would say, if, again, to recap, if you're doing like weekly keys and just kind of slow rolling the dungeon, pugging it out, um, you're pulling one pack at a time and moving on to the next one, I would strongly consider one of the two Dark Ascension builds. And then if you're kind of doing more like higher keys, so we're talking like 26, 27s and up, um, and you're, you're chain pulling everything, you're never pulling just one pack at a time, you're pulling trash onto bosses. Anytime you're doing that kind of stuff, I would strongly encourage you to move over to void form and then you can consider running dark ascension if you really want to make up for like pure single target damage um because you that's the biggest downside with this kind of a build okay so that is talents in as much of a nutshell as i can break it down into there's way more detail in the icy veins guide and the links in the description so if you want kind of more in-depth stuff um it's down there but hopefully that helps you with kind of choosing between our spec talents now, before we stop talking about talents, because I love talking about them so, so much, I do want to make a note about our class talents. Priest is probably one of the more unique specs in the game, or classes in the game, I should say, where we actually have quite a lot of choice inside of our class tree. So I wanted to call this out specifically because this is something that you can change, and I'm not even kidding, like on a boss by boss or key by key basis to optimize your build. Um, so if you're only running the, the same class tree setup that I suggest by default, or that you've been using the whole expansion, and you're looking to improve your character, one of the things you can do that's relatively easy is just really make decisions about this talent tree on what you're currently doing. So like disease dispel, do you need it for that dungeon? Is it is it Brackenhide or is it afflicted or something like that? Take disease dispel. If not, well, don't take it and pick something else. Um, you know, same thing, Shackle and Dead is useful for the incorporeal affix. Outside of that, not really useful. Phantasm is great for entangling weak, so you can take that talent for entangling. Otherwise, don't take it, put it into something else. And when I say put it into something else, what I'm meaning is we have quite a lot of defensive options in our tree. Some of them are more valuable than others, but for example, we do have Spell Warding, which reduces magic damage taken by 3%. You do have to take Holy Nova to get it, even though we don't press Holy Nova. There's also the Flash Shield talent, which I think a lot of people are already taking by default, as well as the other big one is Angel's Mercy and then going down to Light's Inspiration. It does require you to take Unwavering Will. So again, this is kind of a heavy point investment. So you can see what I have in this current build is pretty defensive heavy. Um, if anything, you move this Phantasm point around probably to like Fade CDR or something. This is a pretty defensive setup that I have right now. And the tricky part is like, well, what if you need mass to spell? Well, that's where you have to start dropping utility. Maybe you drop that fade point. Uh, maybe you drop a point in Light's Inspiration to pick up the two mass to spell guys. So you have some choices around, depending on if you need mass, for example. I will also say, if you're saying like, well, I really don't like dropping the defensive for mass, is there any other option? Uh, yes, these last three points in mind games, you can drop these. This is about 1% damage. In, in three points, it's about 1% of your damage, or, or less than, usually. So if you want to fill out your utility even more, you can run something like this. So just keep that in mind while you're making your builds. Some honorable mentions. Essence Devour is fine with Dark Ascension builds. It's just kind of random healing, so it's kind of whatever. Um, Angelic Bulwark, eh, it's kind of inconsistent. Usually doesn't do that much. Could save your life, but usually doesn't. And then, yeah, yeah Power Life is there as well if you want even more like off healing, you can pick that up still as well. 
again, in the Icy Veins Mythic Plus Guide especially, I go into a more deep dive of, like, when these talents make sense based on the dungeon and the affixes. And then on the boss page for Icy Veins, there's a string, talent string on every single boss where I've kind of optimized the talents based on what you need for that fight, if you're kind of curious about what that looks like. But yeah, I just wanted to call this out because I think it's something that if you're if you're trying to improve as a Shadow Priest, it's something that you know this is a pretty easy thing for you to pick up is to move your class talents around based on when you need them. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so from a gearing perspective, I, you know I'll, I'll try to be as generic as possible, but I think gearing is a journey. You shouldn't necessarily just copy what someone else is running. There are several kind of viable setups or best in slot setups depending on what dropped for you, what you crafted first, what you didn't, that kind of stuff. Now, some of that stuff is a bit more universal. So the first thing we'll cover is trinkets. So these are the top trinkets for rating and dungeons, respectively. From a rating perspective, you really want to get your hands on any of these top four are ideal. For progression, I really specifically like uh, two through three. So spoils of Neltharis, Amnus Chromatic Essence, and Vessel of Searing Shadow. The class trinket, Neltharion is called a Suffering, is hard to suggest as like a progression trinket because the DPS swing is going to be kind of all over the place. It can end up working out as slightly better in Sims compared to Spoils. Even the max DPS will be considerably higher, but the problem is it's like, well, it's kind of, if you got a proc in your cooldowns, it's going to look great. If you got a proc not in your cooldowns, it's not going to look so great. So yeah, there's just a bit more control with Spoils and Ominous and even Vessel of Searing Shadows. Again, my general advice, run Spoils, Ominous, or Vessel any combination of those three for progression. And then if you're trying to like parse or really RNG or game out your DPS, then considering swapping in Ethereum's Call of Suffering. Now again, you do want to check eye levels of these things. So like if you have a super low eye level spoils or vessel, it doesn't mean you necessarily always use it over other things. You definitely still want to sim your stuff because eye level of these trinkets can make a massive difference. Like for example, if you got a mythic version of Call of Suffering, well, yes, it is RNG, but those swings get even crazier so it does end up working out more in the aggregate and the average so something to keep in mind for dungeons the top three are pretty much the same although the same note applies for Neltharion's Call of Suffering again kind of pick what makes more sense for you I will put a mention Erupting Spear Fragment can be an option to pick up if you're looking for some more burst it's kind of an awkward timing setup for our cooldowns you kind of play it as a two minute trinket but it is there if you'd like Time Thief's Gambit is also kind of interesting. It's it's specifically for, from the new Dawn of the Infinite Mega Dungeon. Um, it is somewhat, it's kind of at a lower eye, lo eye level as well, but can be decent in dungeons. You kind of have to play around with it. Yeah, it's good in dungeons, wouldn't really use it anywhere else. The other thing that I will note here is that Aridius Fragment is actually doing pretty well with Dark Ascension builds specifically. So normally we don't like Aridius Fragment because it's a three minute cooldown trinket, but with Dark Ascension, use everything on pull and then you have one minute stuff in between your two minute PIs. Um, so a three minute cooldown trinket, you basically have two options. At three minutes, you can use it with Dark Ascension and Mindbender, or you could hold it and make it a four minute trinket. Four minute trinket, very bad, don't ever use it. Uh, which is why it's not played with Void Eruption ever. But with Dark Ascension, you can actually use this on cooldown with Dark Ascension and get some decent results if you're bloodlusting on pull. So if you have that big on pull burst where you have Iridius Fragment, Power Infusion, Dark Ascension, everything is rolling, you can see some pretty massive value out of this trinket, especially because it lasts the same duration as Dark Ascension by default. And kind of depending on the fight time, you might see some good results with this. So this one's gonna be an, a weird one. You might even see it do well in like your typical five minute Sims, very fight length dependent, but might be something to try if you're if you're interested in it. But yeah, that really covers trinkets. There's some other stuff here about like Beacon if you want some Burst and Brackenhide, but yeah. And then to note on Ominous Chromatic Essence, I think you have quite a lot of options here. I think. Generally speaking, a lot of Shadow Priests will run either the Haste or Mastery Resonance for this guy. Once you start hitting high levels of Haste or Mastery, then you can consider using Crit or Obsidian, maybe even Verse if you want. Definitely start simming your character on this to figure out which of these you can use. You can just change the options in Raid Bots. There's a, there's a Sim C string in the Discord you can try out as well. So, And of course, I do have rankings for Trinkets if, you, if anyone is curious. Okay, so other things from a gearing perspective to note, we'll cover stats in a bit. I think the other thing I want to cover is tier set bonuses. So our tier set in, in season two is decent. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a weird one. You do obviously want to get it as much as you can. There are two main viable gearing setups where you'll drop either tier chest or tier gloves are kind of be the, the top two. 
most people end up dropping to your chest and then either crafting a chest or you can use reanimators wicked cassock from the first boss inside of abrus um, so it kind of depends on what you get but you will always run helm shoulders legs and then that fourth piece will either be chest or gloves depending on what you want to run you can see tier set value it's okay <laughs> yeah most of it's on single target so but it's, it's still good okay other things i want to cover is just crafted gear so while you're gearing up Crafted gear is going to be great for filling in the gaps with your gearing. You generally speaking want to craft everything with haste and mastery and just use raid bots to determine what you craft next and what makes the most sense for you. A lot of people, I mean, you'll have, I mean, you can see my character. I have like six or seven crafted items right now. I mean, it's just kind of how things work usually. In terms of embellishments to use, you have a couple options. Generally speaking, I wouldn't suggest elemental lariat for most people. You might see people using this if they're like pushing really high keys. Mostly that's because these options don't make as much sense there. But for the majority of people, these are going to be your top combinations of embellishments. Embellishments are something you can add to specific pieces of crafted gear to get extra effects. Basically, pick whichever of these makes the most sense for you. I went with Shadow Flame Tempered Armor Patch times 2 from a rating perspective. This is like... Generally speaking, the most single target -y setup that you can get. And then Blue Silk and Lining does better in multi-target, cleave, that kind of thing. So if you want like a balanced approach, you could run one of each. And then the other option is a Spore Cloak. So I do have a setup with Spore Cloak, which is a defensive, non-DPS embellishment. It's just this cloak that you can't put on whatever you want. So I did run this for specific progression fights like Magmarax, Neltharian, Sarkarath, that kind of stuff. Because I was uh, dying <laughs> and that those things hurt. You can run that as well if you're looking for something with a bit more defensive value. Um, you have that option too. Make sure you put Flavor Pocket on as well if you want uh, lower food costs. Yeah, and from a gearing perspective, that kind of covers it. The Icy Veins Guide goes over a kind of in-depth of like targeting specific pieces of gear. Maybe some like gear setups if you want to see some examples of what that looks like. You know, it really kind of depends on kind of what you want, um, but this page should get you covered. All right, let's move on. All right, let's cover the rotation briefly for kind of both setups and single target. So this is me showcasing the openers for both the Dark Ascension, and then I just took footage from my last video for the Void Eruption one, since there really is no change with that build. So with these guys, you're going to find that they're going to play pretty similar to each other. Uh, the main difference is what you have access to with each build. So Dark Ascension, you, you're using Mindbender and Death Speaker. Void Eruption, you have Void Bolt, which are going to be the two main differences. Now let's talk about play style. The big change you'll notice with, with this guy, I'm showcasing Distorted Reality here. With the Void Form footage, I was still using Mind's Eye, although honestly, you can still use Distorted Reality with Void Form as well. Kind of up to you. It's it's more or less similar. With Distorted Reality, I do want to note, you're still going to play similarly, meaning you try to wait till the very last second to refresh Devouring Plague, unless you're about to cap insanity. Generally speaking, that means if you have a deficit of 20 or, or, or less. So without Void Touch, that's 80 insanity. With Void Touch, that, that's 130 insanity. And otherwise, you're gonna, it's going to play pretty similarly. The Darkest Engine build also usually doesn't take Malediction, although you can if you really want to, um, which means you have a 45 second cooldown on Void Torrent, which means it does naturally desync itself from Dark Ascension, which is totally fine. I just use that guy on cooldown. You can see I just finished up my, my set of cooldowns here, or my second set of cooldowns here, I guess. And you can see Void Torrent is about to come up here and nothing is up. So you're not actually going to hold it. You just send that guy as long as you still don't have capped Mind Blast and Devouring Plague will take for the full time. Otherwise, you're going to play that similarly. You'll find you just still have to occasionally full refresh your dots. And then the other thing to note that might be a little hard, not hard, but different if you're used to the spec from previous iterations of Shadow Flame Prism or an Inescapable Torment. You do not press Shadow or Death on cooldown with this setup, even while Mindbender is active. So something to keep in mind, you only are going to use that when when you kind of run out of other stuff to do. So make sure you check the priority list on Icy Veins. You basically drop Shadow or Death to below Mind Spike Insanity, unless Mindbender is about to expire soon, or you have a Death Speaker proc, then you can elevate it up. And then if we go ahead and cover the Void Eruption build, like I said, um, this guy is still using Mind's Eye, so it's going to look a little different. You can still play that if you'd like, although I think a Distorted Reality still makes sense for a lot of people as well. In this version outside of Void Touch, you see a bit more of an Insanity buffer as well. So yeah, you can see rotation-wise, it's going to be pretty similar with these two builds. You're not really changing too much. Really, the thing to keep in mind here is that 
kind of how you're using Devouring Plague bit is the thing that will really change. For a lot of people, you'll find Mind's Eye to be a bit more intense and fast-paced because of that reason, because you are just pressing it more often. So you do have to be a bit more tighter with your windows with that. So up to you what you decide to use. Again, I think Destroyed Reality is going to become a, a newer default as people get used to it, but it might take a bit before people kind of get there. So yeah, so these are the kind of opening rotations. Hopefully this has been um, helpful just to see these guys. Like I said, I would suggest doing this yourself and maybe checking out the rotation guide, kind of putting everything together. But yeah, otherwise, th that's the rotation for Shadow. Hopefully that helps. All right, next up, I want to cover stats uh, and secondary stats specifically. So from a stat priority perspective, it's going to look very similar to what you've been used to. Haste Mastery are your top two after Intellect, and then Crit and Verse are more or less equal, maybe slightly lean towards Crit, but kind of depends on your build. So that, that isn't really changing. What I do want to call out is I did make a kind of a deep dive post about understanding how to optimize these stats. So I made a post on it. Icy Veins is now updated as well. And really what I was trying to go over is how to specifically gear your character around secondary stat diminishing returns. So if you're not aware, and I'll link, there's this Wowhead post that goes over from Anj. Um, basically, as you acquire more of a stat, you get penalized depending on how much of it you have. So these are the, the rough thresholds here. What we're really doing here is kind of getting the most bang for our buck with our stats. Once you start getting penalized for our stats, that's when you kind of want to start moving things around because it's so like, for example, if you're trying to optimize your gear, right? And you're saying like, okay, hey, um, I have a gem here that's 70 mastery and 33 haste. Well, if haste is being DR'd by 10%, that means that gem is now worth 70 mastery and 30 haste. So really the question is, is haste 10% better than what you could have run otherwise? And so when you start asking those questions, usually our stats are not that crazy apart from each other to where we will mostly ignore this completely, um, which is why I decided to make this post. So I do want to reiterate, these are not like requirements. Um, they're, they're not caps. They're simply just goals to help you understand what your own personal sims are suggesting. I would not suggest running stat weight sims. I would just say, hey, compare specific changes like swapping gems out, swapping enchants out, changing pieces of gear, changing what your ominous chromatic essence will do, that kind of thing. It is really important to know that there are some things that can really mess up with some of these sims or make it look a little weird. And specifically that is if you're using Vessel of Searing Shadow, you might notice that it's going to suggest a lower thing of haste because it's kind of like a haste stat stick trinket. Ominous Chromatic Essence, you know, also does weird things to your secondary stats depending on where you've put that bonus. Voice of the Silent Star, the Sarkareth Cloak can also do weird stuff. So things to keep in mind. But if we go into the post, the goals here are, you know, first off, gear your character up, prioritize getting as much haste and mastery as possible, acquiring intellect as your top priority. So these goals below don't take uh they're not more important than acquiring item level so that's your first step is get item level once you're there and you've gotten that item level then you can start moving stuff around and kind of min maxing your stats but until then something to keep in mind once you're there the first thing is really you want to get to this 30 to 35 percent haste window and i've explained this here but basically when you're playing void form yog saran you want to lean closer to the 35 percent mark and then Dark Ascension actually usually favors closer to the 30% mark. So you can see currently I'm at my character. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm still kind of working on where I want to land up, land with this stuff. I'm, I'm kind of like right in the middle of that band window because I like to play both. So I mean, you could also have more gear sets if you'd like. But a lot of this for me is just like tweaking gems and enchants and your chromatic essence to kind of line up with what you want. I would still not move around like crafted gear stats. I would, I would, I would still keep those haste mastery. Then your next goal is to get to about 19% mastery. Again, you'll find that because Dark Ascension is leaning more towards 30%, you might see this happen more aggressively with Dark Ascension Sims, um, which again, it's pretty normal. 19% mastery is when that first DR threshold kicks in. So it's not, it's not 30% like it is for haste and versatility. Crit is 35% is where it starts. So mastery is 19% is when that starts hitting in. And this is after consumables and chants and all that stuff. Then after that, once you've hit these two goals, for the most part, you're going to start seeing that your sims and a lot of stuff will be like, okay, now we can afford to move more things into crit or even versatility. I would almost always prefer crit over verse. The reason why, and I even put verse as equal to crit up here, the reason why I still think it's probably equal is because from a defensive perspective, you do get 
extra value out of versatility where crit is just a pure, purely offensive stat. If you're looking to get more tanky, maybe you lean more towards verse after you hit these two, kind of up to you. So yeah, once you hit that 30, 35% haste window, around 19% mastery, that's when it's like, okay, maybe I should start experimenting with moving gems and enchants around to get a bit more crit inside of my build um, or versatility inside of my build. And again, this is gonna be different for everyone. This is just kind of generic advice. Like I mentioned, ways you can do that. Swapping out gems and enchants would be the first thing that I would move around if you're trying to optimize any of this. Uh, you can also adjust your Chromatic Essence Dragonflight. We can kind of make any of them work besides the Verse one, usually. The Verse and Obsidian are the two that are least used as Shadow, but kind of depends on your group. And then you can also adjust your Temporary Rune. I think most people end up using Haste or Mastery. Up to you, whatever makes sense. Yeah, like I said, there are many different best in slot setups. So just because one Shadow Priest that you're looking at has all crit gems and enchants doesn't mean you necessarily should. It's about the relationship with all of your stats together and what makes sense for your character specifically. So yeah, make sure you keep that in mind. I will kind of note, if your Sims are showing something that's going against this generic advice in here, consider like I was saying before, are you running any weird trinkets or things that are kind of changing up what you're seeing or the Sark Cloak? Outside of that, if you're swapping gems and enchants and it's like 100 DPS or even like less than 0.5% DPS, that's kind of in the realm of what I would call insignificant. In as far as our, I don't think it's a significant enough change to warrant absolutely doing it. Specifically, if you're only simming on single target, the advice that I'm giving here is a culmination of single target sims with movement, with ads. I also add targets. I do sims that are simulating a full dungeon environment. And this is kind of the generic advice I'm using for all of that. So if you're only doing patchwork single target five minute sims, you're not going to get the full picture always. So I would caution against going against this advice too crazily unless you're doing more of that advanced stuff. Hopefully this helps out with stats. Like I said, this is more of kind of advanced min max optimization. All of this is inside of Icy Veins or this secondary stats post, which will be in the description. Okay, hopefully that helps. All right, the last thing I'll cover in this guide, just kind of quick stuff, is just kind of gems, enchants, and consumables. I want to put this after the stats section because this is very dependent on what you're doing for stats. Um, so definitely something you should keep in mind there because if you're kind of at some of those thresholds, you might want to move around like what gems you use, for example. But generally speaking, you're going to see, and what I would suggest for most people and most gearing setups is try to use haste and mastery specific gems and enchants as long as you can. Eventually, and when I say eventually, I'm talking about like your 446 best in slot item level. That's when maybe you can consider moving to crit stuff, but otherwise I would do haste and mastery. I would actually lean more towards haste than usual. And again, that's your 30, 35% range. Cause keep in mind, especially if you're just doing patchwork sims, haste is one of those stats that gets better if you're making mistakes or having to do forced movement because of mechanics. Haste is better at covering up those errors compared to other stats. So keep that in mind. These are roughly kind of your enchanting guide for the tier. A lot of this is somewhat flexible. Like you can run leech or avoidance stuff depending on what you're looking for. I like avoidance on prog and then leech otherwise. It kind of depends on what you're doing. It doesn't really matter to be honest. Shadow belt class. If you want to waste some money, you get a small amount of stamina. Leg enchants. They're actually all, there's three leg enchants. They are all basically identical in terms of damage and throughput. So you can pick whichever one is like cheapest or I think this one gives stamina, one gives mana, and then one gives versatility. So you kind of pick whichever one you prefer out of those three. But like I said, they're all generally equal. Most people run Frozen Spell Thread. Like I said, rings, haste or mastery, depending on what you're looking for. Generally speaking for boots, I run just a straight up stamina guy on here, Watcher's Loam, and then weapon enchants. Generally speaking, you're going to run Sophic Devotion uh, for everything. Although I have seen cases where wafting does good, especially if you have like criminally low haste values, like wafting might make sense, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. Check out what makes sense for you and your character. Most people run Civic, though. For consumables, we all use the same potion. No real changes there. As far as files go, this is, as a Shadow Priest, you want to have both Corrupting Rage and Versatility in your bags. Corrupting Rage is a good default. You only want to use this if you can get at least 70% uptime in, in like details of Warcraft logs. The reason why I note that is because 70% uptime isn't necessarily the same thing as the sim option that gets you 70% off time because usually when you need this active is during your cooldowns and during your cooldowns you typically have more healing going on either because of our passive healing or um, that's usually when raid cooldowns are running that kind of thing so the important thing is getting corrupting rage active during your cooldowns if you can get that 
And honestly, you can even get that with like what details will show is like 60% uptime. It's still going to be a good choice. So this is probably like the default to use if you care about damage. And then versatility is like the backup option to use when you're just not getting enough corrupting rage uptime. Or if you want, if you're okay sacrificing that kind of top end damage because you're just worried about living, that's when versatility really comes in. I suggest using both and then just kind of, or having both, sorry, and then picking which one makes the most sense for you in that current situation. Generally speaking, the other options I wouldn't really suggest. There is charge isolation and stack empowerment that are similar gains to corrupting rage but have their own downsides that just don't make sense in the current season in my opinion best food for shadow priest is going to be the feast um, you can also use faded fortune cookie if you want although um, in mythic plus you i forget if they actually fix this i haven't used it in a while but there was a bug where you couldn't actually use the fortune cookie in the middle of a key so you had to use uh, something else i i have flavor pocket now so which is really a great kind of DPS buff in Mythic Plus if you ever die, if you think about it that way. If you're not sure what Flavor Pocket is, I have it somewhere. It increases the duration of well-fed bonuses and they now persist through death. So it can be kind of expensive, but it's nice to have. And then Weapon Runes for Shadow. Most people are going to use either the Howling Rune for Haste or you also have um, Hissing Rune, which is what I'm currently using, which is the Mastery version. Augment Rune, that's the same. Small note, don't use Onyx Annulet Ring as a Shadow Priest. This thing is not good. All right, and that is consumables for Shadow Priest. If you weren't aware, nothing too big has changed since the last video, but just wanted to go over it again. All right, before I end off this video, I want to say I've gone over basically everything inside the Icy Veins Guide at a super, super high level. There are more things in here that are going to be helpful for folks. So I'll call out like the Abris page, for example. So I go over like boss by boss, what, what makes sense. Like here are the talent builds to use. Here are the suggested encounters for those. And then I go by encounter and say like here's kazara here's the string i would use here maybe some notes about defensive usage cooldown usage that kind of stuff i have full clear the rate on mythic so i've tried to put as much of that like mythic changes in here where they make sense if you have questions you can always ask me if you'd like the other one i want to call out is the mythic plus guide i've put in a lot of stuff and a lot of information on this page so if you haven't seen it definitely check it out it kind of goes over like here's how to think about opening up a pull talks about how to create burst damage if you're curious about how to do that I do a big section on utility and specifically like where that utility makes sense which would take me a long time to go over all here kind of a small note about like what mind control enemies in mythic plus and then something else here do a lot on like how to survive <laughs> and kind of wrote a good section on that and kind of what you can move around like i mentioned kind of optimizing your class tree and kind of where that makes sense the defensives in your kit you want to think about as well as some kind of helpful weak cores in that section as well and then the big thing here is i do a pretty deep dive into like when you want to use specific talent builds and kind of go over strength and weaknesses for every single build and then i also kind of do more in depth of like here's when i would pick different versions here are the talent suggestions i'm talking about i have this table here that's kind of generic for like more like keys up to like a 22 level is kind of what this advice is is geared towards or 22 level or below kind of talk about what you're looking for in tyrannical and fortified go over flex points talk about mind spike versus mind flay and then distorted reality versus mind's eye so if you're looking for any of this information it's uh, there's so much here guys like please check this out hopefully it's useful for folks this is something i pull up on like my second monitor anytime i'm doing keys this is like our my handy dandy what utility do i need for this key thing uh, if i just like want a really quick thing of like oh yeah i'm doing a free hold and it's afflicted or something right and it's like cool take purify disease and mass as well if you don't remember what each one is for i go through each dungeon and kind of list off like why i suggest each one for each key so yeah hopefully this is helpful and then the apex specific ones as well so yeah, there's a lot here in these guides and, and I've tried to write down as much as possible to help folks. So please use these resources. These, it's so much easier for me to update the Icy Veins guide. You probably noticed I don't make videos super often. It's a lot of work and frankly, they change stuff so often that it's hard to keep up to date. But the written guide is almost always going to be accurate day of a new patch or changes. So hopefully that helps. Um, and like I said, a ton of these resources are, are in the description if you haven't seen them. Big thank you to everyone that's supported me in the time where I haven't really been making videos or streaming. There's a lot of people still subbed on Twitch, members on YouTube, members of the Patreon. I appreciate all of you. Um, hopefully this has been helpful and this kind of helps making playing Shadow a bit easier for you. Yeah, until next time, we'll see how long it is. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.